welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be diving into the new Viseart palette. This is called the Soleil La Plage palette and it is super pretty and if I botched the name, I apologize. This retails for $44. I actually picked this up on the Viseart website, but I have seen that it's at like Beautylish and there's a couple other places uh, that is popping up now. So I will link them in the description box down below in case you decide you wanna pick this up. I love this packaging. It's just darling. I'm craving the beach right now, so I'm here for this packaging. It is just so pretty and I love it so much. In the video, I create two eyeshadow looks using this palette and of course, I had to create a look using these two shades right here. Because some of the other shades are kind of something similar to what we already have, they're just kind of more golds and peach uh, shimmers and stuff like that. But these two I felt like were kind of the focal point of the palette. And I felt like if people were going to pick this up, it might be because of those two shades. So I'm gonna create two looks. I'm wearing the blue one right now, which it's so pretty. And then I'm gonna create a look using this orange shade. Having these shades, the blue and the orange, like they gave you beautiful mattes to create beautiful looks with those two shades. So I really appreciate the color story in this palette. I also went through my collection and found a bunch of different palettes in my collection to try to give you as many swatches and comparisons as I possibly could in case you were kind of wondering if maybe you wanted to include this in your collection. You guys know that I tried to give you guys as many comparisons as I possibly can. You know, I will be honest, I have like a love-hate relationship with Viseart. I will buy one palette and it will completely blow my mind and I love it and then the next palette I get is a hot mess and I don't have the consistency from Viseart. So my experience with Viseart and their shadows is up and down and it varies from palette to palette. I never get that consistent love when it comes to Viseart, unfortunately. So we're gonna dive in into it today. I am going to create the two eyeshadow looks. So of course, once we get through the two tutorials, we will go ahead and jump into the swatches and comparisons so that you guys can kind of see if this palette is something that you need in your collection. And then of course, after we get through all that, we will go ahead and get into my final thoughts. So without further ado, let's jump into the tutorials and I will see you guys all in my final thoughts. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the first look using this palette. And of course, the two shades that I'm most excited to use are these two right here. The other shades are kind of similar to what we already have in our collections, but I'm so curious about these two shades. So today, I'm actually gonna go into this shade. I think I'm gonna apply it with a dampened sponge applicator. And when I mean dampened, all I do is take a makeup wipe that I have sitting here and I just squeeze it so that I'm not spraying water directly on it, right? Like if I was spraying it with like setting spray or something, it would kind of be too much. I like to just dampen it a little bit. So I'm gonna take the felt tip applicator. This one is actually from Huda Beauty. This is the Fender Blender, but you can buy these like anywhere. You can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them at CVS, you know, Walgreens, stuff like so that. I'm like just gonna grab this shade right here and we're gonna apply this all over the lid. Oh, that shade is beautiful. Now I'm gonna take the Sonia G Builder Pro and I'm gonna grab this shade right here. I'm gonna bring that right out here on the outer corner. And then I'm gonna switch brushes and kind of put it on the tip of the brush. And I'm just gonna softly kind of bring this up and into the crease. I did get some fallout from that brown. I mean, it could have been the brush that I used. You know, you never know, but just FYI, I did get some fallout. Now I'm gonna go back to that really beautiful bright orange, and I'm gonna put that over top of this matte. I wanted to add a little bit of the depth first before going over top of it with this color. I'm gonna go into the bright orange. 
I'm going to tap off and I'm going to lightly bring that right over top and bring it out here in the crease. I wanted to kind of build the depth first and then go over top of it with the shimmer. Whenever I decide to put shimmer in the crease, I always like to put the mattes down first and then go over top with the shimmer. I feel like it's kind of like the finishing touch. It's like I like to put it over top of the depth versus building the depth over top of it. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna grab this shade right here and I'm gonna bring that on the inner corner. I've already kind of started it because I wanted to make sure it would be the right shade. So the orange is so pigmented that the color that I'm trying to put on, it's kind of like, it's like bleeding into this really light shimmer. It's, it's so pigmented and it likes to travel onto the other colors. Okay, so I'm trying to wipe off the orange and it is kind of like, it's a very strong pigment. <laughs> Um, it does not want to just wipe off. Like I have to keep trying, like as I'm wiping it, it's like spreading down into here and it's just, it's a hard color to work with because you get a lot of pigment. So kind of keep that in mind as you're using that shade. Like it's not one of those that just wipes off. It just, it's kind of a very, very, very pigmented orange and it just, Ooh, it stains everything it touches. So I would be very, very careful with it. So I just went off camera, put some concealer on, did this other eye. I wanted to mention that I decided to put this shade right on the center of the lid and it's so pretty. It's such a beautiful shade over top of that orange color. Let's move on to the lower lash line. Let's see what the yellow would look like, should we? Yeah, let's try it. Hell, let's just make up. Let's do this really beautiful bright yellow. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring that right under here. I don't, I don't hate that. I mean, I need something else, obviously, but I don't hate it as the base color. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this dark brown and I'm also gonna grab a little bit of this. So I'm gonna kinda try to bring some of that orange on the lower lash line. So I'm gonna bring that like right here. I'm also going to take some of that brown and bring it right here on the base on the upper. I'm going to switch brushes really quick. I'm going to switch to the smudge brush and just softly kind of smudge out that color. I feel like I want to put the orange on the lower lash line too, but it's so messy. Maybe if I use the smaller smudge brush and maybe if I wet it down, it will calm down some of the fallout. So I've got the brush loaded. I'm gonna tap off and then I'm gonna spray it with some MAC Fix Plus. Here's to hoping it doesn't make a mess. Yes, I love that. Okay, I can do this. And by wetting it down, I'm not getting the fallout that I was hoping I wouldn't get. Because <laughs> um, that shade is a freaking mess to clean up. Okay, I'm going to go off camera and throw some mascara on and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I went ahead and threw on some lashes. These are the Ardell Naked Lashes in the style 421. I will link them in the description box down below. Uh, but overall, I love the way that this look turned out. It's really, really beautiful and it turned out better than I expected. And I think it's a very beautiful, beautiful look. By the way, I paired it with, this is the new Lip Chic from uh, Shantakai in their summer collection. This is called Capucine. Perfect lippy to pair with this eyeshadow look. Like it couldn't have been more perfect. So I love that that shade just really brings that to life and it's so summery and I'm here for it. So that's it for look number one. Let's go ahead and jump into look number two. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into look number two using this palette. I wanna mention that the look that I wore in the first tutorial, the orange one, it lasted all night. Like, I had it on for several hours. I probably didn't wash my makeup off until like 2.30. So I probably had 
all of my makeup on, which is so bad, for probably 14 hours. And it looked really good when I went to bed. So I can tell you the longevity of at least the colors that I used in the tutorial before. Perfection. I am a sucker for this like sky blue, teal, mint, whatever you want to call it. I'm a sucker for that kind of a shade. So we're going to go into it. So it applies with a brush, but you're going to get the best application with a finger. I'm wondering if I should do a halo. I'm kind of in the mood for a halo. I'm gonna grab the Makeup My Mario E5 brush and I'm gonna go into this shade right here and I'm gonna bring that on the inner corner and kind of buff that into the look. Ooh, it's pigmented, you guys. Holy smokes. That shade is much more pigmented than I thought, so I'm gonna kind of blend this out. I'm also going to bring that on the outer corner kind of blend it into the blue and kind of carve it out. I'm going to go back into the really pretty blue color and I am going to bring it back to life. If I wasn't doing this on camera, I would have probably done the brown, like the matte first and then went in with the shimmer, but because I wanted to see what it looked like, I went ahead and went in with the shimmer. But if you're doing this at home, I would just do the mattes first. Okay, I wanna grab this shade right here. I love spotlighting looks like that where it just really makes it pop right there on the center. I'm gonna take the BK Beauty 204 brush and I'm gonna go into this shade right here, but I'm gonna tap off. I don't want it to be too much. I wanna add some definition like right here on the outer corner. I'm kind of taking that shade and putting it between the brown and the blue just to add some definition. It will make the blue pop even more. Okay, so I went ahead and threw in some concealer. Let's move to the lower lash line. I'm gonna take the BK Beauty 204 brush and I'm gonna go into this blue shade right here but I am gonna load the brush up with it and then I'm gonna spray it with some setting spray. I'm gonna place this right where the blue is on the top. So I'm gonna bring it right here. I am gonna go into this shade right here. I am gonna put that on the inner corner and the outer corner. So I'm gonna place it right here. And right here. Then I'm gonna take a flat definer brush from Sigma and I'm gonna grab this shade and I am gonna focus this right here just to deepen it so that it makes the blue pop. Okay, so I am back. This is the final look and I couldn't decide which lippy to pair this with. In my outro, I will be wearing it with this lippy, which I cannot pronounce it because I don't really know. It's written in a signature, but it's from Christian Audette. They collaborated with somebody, so I'll put it down here at the bottom of the screen because I can't read what it is. I also was wearing the Christian Audette Lisa Lisa D1 lip liner in the shade Nude Sandals. You will see that combination in the outro. Okay, so this kind of just gives me that like summer beachy vibe. I'm wearing this really cute summer dress. So I was like, I need like a pink or an orange or something. So I grabbed this from YSL. It's a little sample that I think I might need to buy the full size of. I don't need it, but I might. Okay guys, so the writing is very small. I'm going to have to take a picture of it and blow it up because I can't read it. I'm going to need bifocals here pretty quick, you guys, because I'm starting to not be able to read anything. This is the Rouge Lipstick in the number 45. If I find it, I will link it in the description box down below. It's so pretty, right? Oh, I am here for these hot pink, bright orange lippies. I am here for them. I decided to do the two lippies because I figured... If many of you guys wanted to try to recreate this eyeshadow look with this palette or another palette and you don't want to wear this hot pink, I wanted to give you kind of a different option for a nude lip. Um, 
but let me know in the comments down below which one you guys like better because I'm kind of here for this pink. I just love this. So anyways, this is the final look. Let's go ahead and jump into the swatches and comparisons. I'm going to compare this to a bunch of palettes in my collection. So you guys will be there for a minute checking out those swatches. I hope that they are helpful. And then of course we will get into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Okay, so now that we've made it through the swatches and comparisons, let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts. I do hope that those swatches and comparisons were helpful. I went through so many palettes to try to find as many similar color stories as I could, so I do hope that that was helpful. I want to first talk about the two main shimmer shades that I used. This shade right here is kind of disappointing. It's not as pretty as I was hoping it would be. It's pretty, it's usable, but I was hoping for a little bit more pigment. It doesn't have a lot of opacity to it. Like you really have to build this pigment and build it and build it. And it's almost kind of see-through. So it's almost more of like a more sheer type of shimmer shade. And you really have to build it in order to get a really pretty intensity. It's a pretty shade. It's workable. I wish it had as much opacity as some of the others. Like the weakest shimmer shade that has the least amount of opacity is kind of the star of the show, right? So like that blue shade is kind of the star of this palette. It's that pop of color that really makes this appealing because it's all about the sea. I mean, the packaging's blue. I mean, that blue is kind of the focal point of the palette. So unfortunately, I wish that it was more pigmented than it is. As you saw in the swatches, I did swatch it next to this palette from Tom Ford. This is the Soleil et Lune. Et Lune? Et Lune? I might be pronouncing that wrong. There's probably a fancier way of saying it, but this is one of my favorite Tom Ford palettes. This one in the first frost. Oh, they're perfection. It is absolutely stunning, but I will say these two shades, so this one in this palette and this blue in this Viseart, they're very similar. So if you missed out on this Tom Ford palette and you want that blue shade that's in this palette, uh, this one from Viseart is, is almost identical to the shade. You do get more opacity with the Tom Ford and you get more of an instant uh, opaque look on the eye, but this you can build it up in the Viseart. So I wanted to mention that because it is so pretty. Oh, I love that shade. Um, so overall, the thing that really impressed me were the mattes. The mattes were amazing. And as I mentioned in the intro, my relationship with Viseart is up and down. I will get one palette and love it. And then the next palette, I absolutely just don't like it. And I'm like, why did I waste my money on this? So I always have this like up and down uh, relationship with Viseart. It never feels consistent to me within the formula ver from palette to palette. But this one, the mattes are just perfection. And 
it, it these mats remind me of why people love busy art uh, because they're just beautiful mattes. They blend beautifully. And even this shade right here, I can't tell you how many palettes that I've had that has this dark shade in the Vizzy Art, and it's so weak. This, not weak. It is pigment, and it's instant pigment. And it's also extremely easy to blend out. So I love the mattes in this palette. I think the shimmers are beautiful. I do wish that this was a little bit more pigmented than it is, but it's workable. This shade right here is messy, messy. And it's it was hard for me to clean up the fallout on this one. I had to like really wipe my under eye. And as I was wiping, I would get this line of the color. It was definitely a very, very messy, opaque shadow. I would recommend using that shadow when you don't have a full face of makeup because you're gonna, ha I mean, I had a lot of fallout with it and not only did I have the fallout, but I also struggled cleaning it up. Like it took a lot more to clean it up than some of the other shimmers that I've used. So kind of keep that in mind. But other than the blue shade kind of being a disappointment, this is a really beautiful palette and Viseart did a great job on the formula overall. Uh, so I hope that this review was helpful and I hope that those swatches and comparisons were helpful for you to decide if this was something that you need in your collection. I know that there's so many new launches and so many new palettes and sometimes we get to the point where we're just getting too much of the same. So I really try to share as many swatches as I can so that those of you out there that have the palettes that I swatched and compared, you can decide if the color story is unique enough for you to pick up. So those are my overall thoughts. Sound off down below in the comment section. Let us know, have you guys picked up this palette? If you have, share with us your thoughts. Let us know if you love it or you don't. Like, just share with us in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.